Welcome back to the Renegade Report. I'm Francis Mayer, Sports Information Director for Guess Who? The Renegades. And right now we're going to talk to uh, two gentlemen from two different programs who probably have more in common than they, than they might think. Um, Coach, Nick, how are you today? Doing very well, Francis. What's going on? Well, I'm hanging out here with you, and that's a yeah. bonus, you pickleballing fool. That's right. Guy. I got to give, oh, sorry, I got to give a shout out to my pickleball boys group play with. They wanted me to, get, they wanted me to do that. So. Not, you I'll just got it, the way there. You got it out there, and I think uh, Coach Coach Loudy, I think he was off playing pickleball. He oh. is. No, me and him are we're pickleball fools. This is a real sport. It is. Season. I'm not lying to you. This is, and, yeah. and we have Romero with us from Bakersfield College Wrestling. They're going to be hosting the Southern California Regional Tournament at the Yale Bishop Sports Center this weekend. That starts at 10 a.m. And this is a chance to see some of the best wrestling in Southern California. And there's going to be a lot of matches in one place. And the SoCal Tournament is not an easy tournament. And the reason I said you two have something in common is because I believe the most insanely competitive, like almost to a strange degree, athletes on campus – Tennis players. Oh, wow. Coach James, is that unfair? No, you're totally 100% right there. Like, what is it about tennis players? Like, is it the three hour matches? Is it the. You know, not only that, I think it's, you know, tennis kind of honestly, when I played it, it gets a bad rap saying it's like a, n- no pun intended here, but like a panty sport. And I got that all as I grew up. And I think it kind of fuels them to show them, like, for us to show them, you know, you go out and try it. And it's honestly, it's more mental than anything not only do you have to have the physicality but you also if you can't uh just mentally block some stuff out man you're gonna get eaten alive out there well and, and you you've you frightened some people in your playing career i have yeah uh you, you know they kind of take a look at me and say oh what is this pips week gonna do you know i'm like five foot three some people may say I'm lying about that, but I am five foot three. So I'm like, he's five so three. Five three. That's fine. Just on the record, there. Yeah, um, we've both known some like you know one hundred three pounders, one twenty five pounders who are short, but let's tear you up. Yeah. So there you go. Um, I, I can see that, but boy, you watch a tennis match, a competitive tennis match, and you know both of our tennis teams last year, and, and the women's side definitely um, uh, had a co conference championship for the first time in a long time. Oh, right? it's been over. I'd say over twenty. I may be wrong, but over 20 years. I mean, it was just, it was incredible to see the hard work they put in from when they started in the fall and, you know, the work Louder Milk has, has done. He, I mean, I would say, honestly, he's probably one of the best associate head coaches in California. You know, he's, I, he's yeah. been around the block and he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and he, uh, he is he is mildly intense. He reinforces that stereotype I have about yes. tennis. Yes, he does. Yes. Uh, Macias, now your team actually. You, you're making conference championships seem kind of routine at this point. Um, yeah, two in a row now. Yeah, last year we were co-champions. Mm-hmm. I believe the year before that it was co-champions as well. But what about this year? This year we won it. You know, our team did what they had to do. You know, Xavion came out in the final. You know, we had, I think it was like six guys in the final out of 10 weight classes. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, our guys are, they're there. They wrestled everybody in the state. You know, we travel a lot, stay overnight, and, you know, get ready for those big tournaments, and it's time to show it. Well, you know? and, and it is time to show it, and what's interesting about wrestling is nothing matters. No. It's 0-0 zero, zero now. 0-0. Zero, no, zero. From now on, it's 0-0 zero, zero every weekend. And, it's and, and that's different because basketball or, you know, tennis, they, they play all these matches, and if the sum result of those matches is good enough, then they get to go on to the postseason. But in wrestling... It's not like that. No. So you'll have the regional tournament, which, you know, everybody brings up. There are 12 guys, 10 guys. It's 10 guys straight, like their regular lineup, and then they bring up two extra guys. So they'll bring those guys, and out of those, you know, 30 guys in each weight or whatever it is, you know, there'll be, I believe it's six. Yeah. Six will qualify to the state tournament. But even if you take six in the tournament, you still have to wrestle again to get true sixth. So the guy that wins the seventh place match, he gets another chance to qualify the state. And if he beats you in your sixth place, you're out, he's in, he takes your spot. And we've had some dramatic finales at Bakersfield College over the years um, in that very scenario. You know, it's almost harder. When you look at what guys have to uh, do to win third place in tournaments and go through wrestlebacks, you're like, man, that's a rough road, dude. It's a long way like especially if you lose that first round <laughs> you know, you it's a battle to get back it really is and guys do it and it's very inspiring to watch but uh romero uh, not to be a downer and i don't think this is a downer because i think you like to scrap um the heavyweight class is not soft this no. year we have five returning state placers mm. 
and you know a couple of guys that are really good plays. There's probably like three, four guys that are really good good enough to place, and out of those eight guys that are good enough to place, only six of them are going to make it. Well, and, and you have had some battles this year, um, you know, including when we saw in the Gil Bishop Sports Center, which, yeah. I mean, went into about as many overtimes as I've seen in a match. Um, and that was that was rough. Yes. That was tough. How long did it take you to shake that off? Because it did not, unfortunately, Romero did not come out on top in that match, but it was not for lack of trying. Great effort. but yeah. it, I still have it on me. Like, it doesn't weigh me down. It's just in the back of my mind, like, I had to prove that that wasn't – Go, like to happen, you know. I lost someone once more afterwards, but I know I'm better than what I've been performing at these past two, three weeks. But this is the weekend to show it. Well, and for wrestlers, you know, it's like we have finals going on right now. Yeah. And some of you guys are dieting, some of you guys are nursing injuries. Uh, but this is it. There's no maybe next weekend it, if you don't. It's get all it. or nothing this weekend. That is absolutely correct. You want to be at the Gil Bishop Sports Center to see that happen. Uh, 10 a.m. Saturday, uh, high drama. You're going to see some great Bakersfield College athletes, including uh, Pedro Corona, who you know, is a defending All-American, and he's a guy who has a lot to prove. Yes. Xavion Roberson wants to make a splash. And these are guys uh, that could you know, ostensibly go on and get a scholarship, yourself included. So there's some things in play there for BC yeah. wrestlers. All our wrestlers, they're, should, they're up there. Yeah. So we have a uh, you know uh, there's Avion, Peter, Moss, there's Goodinas. A good yes. And you know guys that are returning placers or should be placers this year. Is Kuntz is he healthy? Kuntz is ge getting there. He's okay, cool. he's healthy compared to how he was a little back then. But he's been fun. It's been fun to watch his development. Yes, he's, really he's been growing him. a lot. He's Absolutely. he's better himself. He's a guy that should be in the placing top four. Well, we we'll, we'll wish him the best, and we'll see how things turn out for him after weigh-ins. Uh, Coach Jacobs, um, it looks like somebody somebody rolled in here. Do you know this gentleman? Do we need to frisk him? He no, looks a little he's suspect. good. He's good. I can vouch for him. Okay, who is this gentleman? This would be a uh, freshman up-and-coming player, Salvador Ramirez from Ridgeview High School. Not you bird dogged him over there at Ridgeview, huh? Oh yeah. Nice, nice. Where do you see him fitting into the the master plan of Jacobs this year? You know, every spot's open this year. You know, we've unlike last year where you know. It was kind of like, you know, we were okay at the bottom, not so good at the top. This year we're kind of evenly balanced. And honestly, we've got 16, 17 guys coming out. They can all vouch for a spot, so everything's wide open, which is a good problem to have, but it's one that I've been stressing about since the fall season started because a lot of guys, especially Salvador, has a lot to bring to the table. And now it's kind of crunch time for me, you know, going into my winter break, kind of looking at the work what we've done to fall, who I think, you know, needs to prove something a little more. And I have a few guys that are in that spot, Salvador included. You know, he has a chance to kind of make that leap. But now when we're over the break and doing our challenge matches, it's going to be coming down to, you know, who's put in the work and who's going to take it seriously. So you do let them challenge like they do in wrestling? Yes. Like if some, some guys say, like, I think I'm number one. I do. We don't really do that in the fall just because um, I like to – see where we're at before I kind of make I mean we will occasionally every other month I'll have a few guys play just because I don't really know much about them um, but now that I've gotten a whole semester to see what they can do where they stand we're going to group them up uh, in little subgroups over the winter break they're going to play everyone in their group twice two out of three full sets we're, we're not messing around there because I got to see who mentally is going to be able to get through that because there's going to be some times to where you may have to play some three setters back to back, and you gotta be ready. You know, now it, it, is. it is, and it's it's very it's like I said, wildly competitive, and and the the that ranking ladder goes into it because if you're the number one at BC, it means you have to play everybody else's number one. That's correct, and that's tough. Yes. Um, but coach, uh, I believe coach Laddermilk on the women's side, I think he has a spot open uh, for someone who's qualified, that's right, and ready to compete and become part of BC women's tennis, yeah. um, and they can show up, I think, on third. Tuesdays and Thursdays in the afternoon to and or email Coach Laudermilk or you for that matter and set up a time to try out. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Right now, like I said, we're looking for you know one more, two to kind of be safe. But you know, what's like I said, right now we got a good group of girls out there. A lot of you know, defending conference champions too. That's so right. You know, like I said, we um, we've got some freshmen coming up. Uh, Kayleen Sanchez, who you know she's looking pretty solid, but there's some things. 
you know, that she needs to work on a little bit to kind of make that next jump. Well, and, and there's there's this old, you know, uh, stereotype about BC that, like, we'll let anybody be on a team. And it's like, uh, no, no, we don't. Um, if they can hang through practices and they don't quit, then maybe they'll, they'll, they'll be on the team, but that doesn't mean they're going to compete. Um, you know, our coaches are highly skilled, very demanding, and they're not going to send people out that are going to embarrass the institution or possibly injure themselves. Um, and n not being prepared is a good way to get hurt. Yes. Okay. So you don't want to have that carry with you. But uh, on a high note, uh, Coach Jacobs, can't wait to see what you put together uh, with the men's team. You always have characters on your teams, and oh, I love yeah. that, dude. Oh, yeah. No, this year we uh, – did you get a chance to meet Mario Cabaloza? No, but, last year? No, but, but does he – we need to replace Yanez's hair. So we need a haircut. Ooh, that's – I don't know if I have anyone like that, but I can tell you, watch out for the Cabaloza brothers, man. There's something else. Are they fierce? Nasty. You know they like they like to talk a little bit. Okay. So we they're a little they're, they're like a mixture of Yanez and Austin Love. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Those men's tennis players are characters. Uh, yeah. Macias, when, when you have time, you ought to come out and catch a match. They're they're really funny, and it's a type of competition that you it might surprise you. The viciousness, yeah. the sheer viciousness. There's swinging clubs around. So, and are you excited about playing at the college level? Yes. That's all you got. Let me ask you this. <laughs> what bit of holiday food are you most excited about? Holiday food? Yes. Mm. I like tamales myself. Tamales? Yes. Oh, those things are good. All Pro day. Probably pozole. Oh, oh yeah. Pozole. There it is. Excellent call. There it is. On that note, you're cooking. <laughs> He's going to save his talking for the season. He's not one of the brothers. So, uh, yeah. Um, thank you for being on the show. Good to see you. Macias, good luck this weekend. Thank you. I Appreciate hope that you, you take your best match out there and uh, represent us well. Sure well, thank you. All right, awesome. When we come back, we will talk to the coach of coaches, Coach Carl Ferreira of Bakersfield College Volleyball. Uh, they had a wonderful season, an excellent run, both on a human level and an athletic level, even though they're one and the same. And when he comes in, we're going to talk about that and really whatever else Coach Carl wants to talk about because he's that cool of a guy. Don't go anywhere. There's more Renegade Report coming right up. Bleh. just around the corner and